Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Environment Omaha's Energy Seminar. My name is Mike McMeekin. I'm the president of Lamprey Nearson and Associates. Um, I know a number of you were here about a week ago for the World Environment Day uh, discussion, and I want all of you to note the change in the water bottles that <laughs> were present. So. Uh, I am co-chairing the Environment Omaha Initiative with Steve Jensen, who is the City of Omaha's planning director. And Steve and I are fortunate to be working with a large number of dedicated people in this endeavor, starting especially with Connie Spellman, who's the executive director of Omaha by Design in the far back, and, and her staff, who are primarily responsible for the planning of today's seminar. In addition, we've been assisted by uh, many members of the staff of the City of Omaha Planning, Public Works, and Parks Departments. Uh, and in addition, over 100 volunteers who are serving on our advisory committees, many of whom are here in attendance today. Thank you all of you for your help in this endeavor. The purpose of Environment Omaha is to produce an environmental element to the City of Omaha's master plan. Those of you who are familiar with Omaha by design will recall that just a couple of years ago, a similar process was used to create an urban design element to the master plan. It is our hope that the Environment Omaha initiative, through the leadership of city government, will produce local action on environmental issues and at the same time stimulate economic development in Omaha and stimulate innovative thinking about conservation and resource efficiency in all of our organizations. Even though we are early in the process of developing the environmental element, it has become apparent that energy is an overriding factor in all of the five areas that we're working in. The natural environment, urban form and transportation, building construction, resource conservation, and community health. Because of these impacts throughout our initiative, we believe that it was important to bring together our local energy providers, as well as our consultant, the Rocky Mountain Institute, who will be contributing today by uh, teleconference from Colorado, to bring these uh, two parties together um, for an educational session that we hope accomplishes several things. First of all, we want uh, all of us working on our initiative and those involved in the public, those who are interested, to have an understanding of what OPPD and MUD are doing, uh, what their future demands are, and what their plans are to meet those future demands. We want to provide all of us in, Omer in Omaha the opportunity to hear the views of Rocky Mountain Institute, who is a nationwide leader in thinking in the area of energy efficiency. And finally, we hope that this forum and the education that it provides will help our initiative help OPPD and MUD to meet their goals and even go beyond their goals. Uh, in the future, we plan to invite Congressman Lee Terry uh, to address our advisory committees on uh, federal energy legislation that is ongoing right now. Um, so we look forward to that. Uh, I'd like to thank OPPD and MUD for their willingness to participate today and for their sponsorship of the Rocky Mountain Institute in their participation today. Finally, today's discussion is being videotaped by Bill Moore of EV World, and the video will be available on the EV World website as well as on the Environment Omaha website. And with that, I would like to introduce Marcella Thompson, who will be our facilitator today. Marcella is the Director of Sustainability at ConAgra. She's a member of our Environment Omaha Corps Committee and serves as the chair of our Resource Conservation Committee. Marcella? To answer the question, it's still a couple weeks away, hopefully not during this meeting. <laughs> Well, welcome everyone. As Mike said, I'm the Director of Sustainability at ConAgra Foods and the Chair of the Resource Conservation Advisory Committee. Um, 
as he talked about, we're here this afternoon to talk about energy, and it's certainly an issue that's going to be of focus for our committee, but there's been interest and overlap in the other committees. So we wanted to provide everyone an opportunity to hear from the local utilities and really um, become level set on this issue and leave um, with a good understanding of where we are at now and, and where we're headed in the future. And one of my favorite quotes is from Albert Einstein. He says, we can't solve the problems by using the same thinking in which we created them. It's easy to find ourselves thinking about energy and climate change in the context of where we are today and how we got to this point. But I think what we need to focus on is where we can go, um, um, is where we can go and, and, and best and even more so the path to get us there in the future. You know, in my role at ConAgra, the past year we've been tracking and there's been an unprecedented amount of uh, focus on federal legislation related to climate change and energy management. And some of the targets that they're throwing out there um, can seem daunting. They're talking about up to 20% by 2020, 80% by 2050. And to think about that definitely gives you pause for thought and can seem impossible to achieve. 11 years from now, or 2020, um, if we turn the table and look back 11 years, I would say that locally we had no Dodge Street Expressway, the first national tower wasn't built, and we had no Quest Center, certainly things that are very hard to think about Omaha without. You want to take the 2050 goal, which is 40 years away, turn the table again, I'd love to travel with you all back 40 years, but I wasn't even a glimmer in my parents', parents eye if they even had eyes for each other at that point. Um, but we would be in the midst of the Vietnam War, the civil rights movement would be at its peak, and we would still be a couple years from even celebrating our first, uh, um, our first Earth Day. So that little mental exercise gives me some perspective of how capable we are of making some real change. And even though it's hard to think about it in our day-to-day -day lives as we get up, go to work, spend time with our families, we really can do it at a very rapid pace. And so that's what I want to challenge us all to leave here with and think about as we talk about climate and as we talk about energy policy, to do so in a way that is very respectful of where we are today, but also is open to the possibility of where we can go tomorrow. So with that, I want to introduce our first panelist, which is Dave DeBoer. He's a senior, senior utilization engineer with MUD. Dave has a BS in me mechanical engineering and is a registered professional engineer in the state of Nebraska. He began his career as a design engineer at OPPD. He worked on large coal and nuclear projects uh, for power generating stations. He accepted a position with HDR where he worked both nationally and internationally. And after seven years, he accepted a position at MUD where he's, where he's a responsible supervisor for overseeing the large volume of customers in the Omaha marketplace. Dave is an instructor at the Peter Kiewit Institute, a certified energy manager, and he serves on the board of the Resource Conservation Advisory Committee for Environment Omaha. So welcome, Dave.